hi and hello to everyone in this video we are going to discuss about the receiver model for noise related analysis particularly we are going to discuss about the for the continuous wave modulated system like amplitude modulation and frequency modulation or angle modulation for that how the receiver is modeled such that we can carry out the noise related analysis okay welcome to the lecture so this is the model this is the receiver model right we know when we send a modulated signal okay it's a continuous wave modulation it can be the modulator can be either amplitude modulation or angle modulation right so it can be it will be demodulated right so what is happening is we are going to discuss about the noise related analysis right so if a noise is there in the signal okay when the modulated signal in the receiver it is get affected by the noise so what is going to happen how we are going to analyze for that we are going to have this model this is called receiver model right so the receiver model will definitely have a demodulator okay because a demodulator is needed to convert the modulated signal to the message signal or the output signal right okay so before the modulated demodulator is there uh, and we have a band pass filter and this together is the receiver right so before the signal is reaching the receiver it is affected by the noise right so the noise we are taking is omega of t the modulated signal is the s of t right so the signal present at this point at the receiver this dotted line this dotted box you can see here that's the receiver right so the input to the receiver is nothing but the modulated signal and the noise signal right now what sort of noise we are assuming we are assuming the noise to be a gaussian white noise right uh, why it's called a gaussian white noise because it's a gaussian its power uh, its probability density function right is in gaussian shape and uh, its power spectral density right power spectral density psd i can say uh, of the noise is n not by 2 what is power spectral density it is nothing but uh, for the frequencies right what is the power related okay if you relate the power which is s omega f right omega is the noise right so the power of the omega okay the power of the noise signal for various frequency for the gaussian white noise it is constant n not by 2 right so this is the power spectral density of the white noise so this is the noise we are assuming to be present at the input of the receiver okay right now uh, what is happening you can see uh, this band pass filter right uh, is will be uh, you can see the input uh, the noise input at the band pass filter is omega t which is the gaussian white noise the output which is the filtered noise is n of t okay the filtered noise is n of t right and if you say the band pass filter the central frequency is fc right and the bandwidth is bt okay so what happens we clearly know the band pass filter will have a spectrum like this right so if it is fc we can see in the double sided spectrum it is fc and minus fc so n of t uh, uh, the whose power spectral density psd right of the noise is this okay and the bandwidth is b of t bt the bandwidth bandwidth is bt okay right that's what i say here the mid band frequency of the band pass filter is fc and the bandwidth is bt this nt is the filtered noise this is the power spectral density of the filtered noise what is power spectral density it is very simple it is the power of the signal here it is a noise signal versus frequency why it is like this because this n of t is passed through a band pass filter whose whose frequency is fc and the bandwidth of the band pass filter is bt so it is like this okay now okay generally we assume that the mid band frequency is fc is much greater than the bandwidth okay so we can say the filtered noise is a narrow band noise right because bandwidth is very small we can see the bandwidth is very very small when compared with the mid band frequency fc okay so we can assume the noise to be a narrow band noise narrow band noise can be represented in this form this form of represented is called canonical form 
I am representing in the form of n of t is split into two signals where n i and n q, where n i is the in phase component or the cosine component, n q is the quadrature component or the sine component, right? This is represented the phasor diagram like this. You can see in phase component is this quadrature 90 degree with respect to this. Okay, even you can represent in the polar form like this, where this is the hypotenuse, right? So this is n q. I can say this is the magnitude of this line is n q. Okay, so this is n i, this is n q. So what is r of t? Which is square root of n i square plus n q square. What is the angle? Which is tan inverse of opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So op what is opposite side of this angle? It is n q. The adjacent side is n i. Okay, this is how we represent the narrow band noise. Okay, either you can represent in the canonical form or this form, right? Mostly we will be using the canonical form. Okay, now uh, what do, how do, what happens to the output of the bandpass filter? We know very well from the previous slide. I can explain what is the input of the bandpass filter. Input of the bandpass filter is the modulated signal and the Gaussian noise or the white Gaussian noise. Okay, so what happens? The output of the bandpass filter I am going to represent by the notation x of t. Okay, so x of t should have the modulated signal. Because the modulated signal should be there, then only it can be demodulated. Okay, only your noise, the white Gaussian noise, omega t, is converted to n of t. Right. So the output of the bandpass filter is s of t plus n of t. Right. So n of t, I can say it is the filtered, filtered version of white Gaussian noise, omega of t. Right. Okay. So that's what x of t is s of t plus n of t and what is s of t we know s of t is the modulated uh, signal it clearly depends on the type of modulation right and this x of t is given to the uh, demodulator okay it's not a modulator it is given to the demodulator input is given to the demodulator input we can see from the block diagram this x of t is given to the demodulator input right now uh, we will find out, uh, we need to find out some measures, right? For that, uh, we will find out the powers in average noise power, okay? Average no noise power, right? What is the noise we have here after the filter? We can see from here, the omega t is a white Gaussian noise. It is passed through a bandpass filter whose uh, mid-band frequency is fc and bandwidth is bt and the output of the bandpass filter is n of t right and this is the power spectral density using this power spectral density we can compute the average noise power okay how to compute the average noise power it is nothing but the area under the curve area under the curve right so what is the amplitude of this curve right you can see it's a it's a rectangle right a rectangle or square it's of this shape okay so the amplitude is clearly n naught by 2 what is the width of the curve bt and it is 2 times or there, right? So, I can write it here, 2 times n naught by 2, that is amplitude and the width is Bt. Okay, so it is the average noise power of the white Gaussian noise passed through a bandpass filter is n naught Bt. Okay, this will be useful uh, while analyzing the, for different cases, right? In the next, next videos, we will be, uh, we will be discussing for the double sideband uh, suppressed carrier receiver, double sideband, uh, uh, single sideband receiver, and uh, and we will be discussing about the noise analysis for the uh, frequency modulation, right? Okay, this is just a model, right? We are not going into any specific type, right? Okay, now what are the measures, right? This is one measure, I can say, at the demodulator input, okay, I can say simply signal to noise ratio, right? It's very simple signal to noise ratio. So at the demodulator input, what is there? You can see here at the demodulator input, what we have at the demodulator input, we have the signal S of t. We have the noise N of t, right? So if you are able to find the power of the signal divided by the power of the noise, that is a signal to noise ratio at the input that I cap capital I okay average power of s of t uh, and the app divided by the average power of the filtered noise n of t 
okay there is another measure where output signal to noise ratio okay o- output in the sense output of the demodulated output of the demodulator right so it is the average power of the demodulated message signal divided by the average power of the noise at the demodulator output right after demodulation definitely in the output also we will be having some noise right so if you are able to compute the uh, average power of the signal at the output divided by the average power of the noise at the output we can say that is the snr o okay right and what is snr o depends snr o of course depends on the type of modulation used at the transmitter and the demodulation used at the receiver okay right it depends on these things right two things then we have something uh, uh, something called channel signal to noise ratio it is also called as input signal to noise ratio okay i am using small i don't confuse with snr i previously at the demodulator input right it is the channel signal to noise ratio or the input signal to noise ratio right so it is depend on the entire receiver entire receiver right we are speaking about the receiver point of view okay at the receiver point of view what is the signal present at the input of the receiver divided by the noise present at the i mean power of the signal present at the input of the receiver divided by the power of the noise present at the input of the receiver right okay right so that's what i say if you measure here okay i can okay if you are measuring at this point this is snr capital i if you are measuring here it is snr capital o if you are measuring at this point it is snr small i i can say or snr c channel okay right that's what i say here average signal power the receiver input average noise power at the oh god it's a receiver uh, average noise power at the not the receiver output it should be receiver input right i beg your pardon it's a receiver input clear right now this is the important term figure of merit how we will say uh, which system has better noise performance right either it is amplitude modulation or frequency modulation it depends on the figure of merit which clearly says which is snr o that is the receiver output signal to noise ratio at the receiver output or demodulator output divided by the signal to noise ratio at the receiver input okay this also said as can be said by snr c snr i small i and snr c are the same okay normally the figure of merit will be greater than or equal to 1 it depends on the type of modulation right now in the next video we will be discussing about three types of noise analysis we are going to do for three different systems okay first one what is the we are going to analyze what is the noise in double side band suppressed carrier receiver particularly using coherent detection coherent detection this is the first one then we will be doing the we will be analyzing what is the noise in the single side band receiver using the same coherent detection okay then the third case we will we are going to analyze the noise in the am receiver simple am receiver that is am receiver means i can this is also can be said as double side band with the carrier okay with the carrier right using envelope detection using envelope detection okay envelope detection and the no- last case we are going to analyze the noise in the fm receiver okay these four cases i will try to make it as a four different videos okay right and we can clearly see this is the model this is the model right so what happens um, in the first case the first case we will be using a coherent detection right in the third case we will use envelope detection here it's an fm receiver the same model what will be changing in the first case it will be a double side band suppressed carrier in the second case it is a single side band 
the third case it is a double sideband with carrier the modulator is envelope detection okay in the last one it is the frequency modulator signal okay so this is the model where this and this will be changing now using uh, when the, uh, when the, the modulator signal and the demodulator are changing then what we are going to do we are going to find out the signal to noise ratio snro snrc or snri and figure of merit okay that's the agenda for the uh, for the coming videos okay we will make one video for each of 1 2 3 4 right thanks for listening happy learning